Hi, I'm Matt and welcome to Tech Tested. Today we're going to take a look at the Radeon HD 4870. Now before we move on, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss more content like we are posting today. Now back to the video. The Radeon HD 4870 launched all the way back in 2008 and competed directly with the GTX 260. This was AMD's flagship card and they really had no answer to the GTX 280, so they were forced to compete in the mid-range market. Still, this graphics card did very well against the GTX 260, trading blows with it in most games. Its launch price was also $100 cheaper than the GTX 260, coming in at $300. That made this a really good value for the mid-range market. This was also the first graphics card to sport GDDR5 memory. The original model had 512 megabytes of memory, but the model we're looking at today has one gigabyte. That memory is clocked in at 900 megahertz and is running on a 256-bit memory bus. The core clock is set to 750 megahertz, and this GPU is built on the TerraScale architecture with the 55 nanometer process. Unfortunately, the graphics card is limited to DirectX 10.1. There's no DirectX 11 or 12 support, and the driver support ended all the way back with Windows 8. Despite that, the display drivers do actually work with Windows 10. They're just not gonna be updated at all. Now, the GPU market today is in really bad shape, making this card even more expensive than it ever really should be. Most of the listings I found for this card are going between $25 and $50 on eBay, and that's pretty expensive for a card that's this old. Still, you guys probably want to know how it performs in games, so I ran a couple benchmarks. We paired the HD 4870 with an i5-4690K and 16GB of DDR3 memory, running at 1600MHz. First up, we have Unigen Heaven benchmark running in DirectX 9 mode on the lowest settings possible. At 1080p, we were running 37.5 frames per second. Not ideal by any stretch of the imagination. If we drop the resolution down to 720p, we shoot up to 50 frames per second on average, which is much more reasonable. Moving on to CSGO with low settings at 1080p, we saw an average frame rate of close to 40 frames per second, but that was actually quite stuttery. Dropping it down to 720p did get us much closer to the 60 frames per second you'd be looking for. However, that's still not acceptable for competitive gameplay. You definitely want the highest frame rates possible if you're gonna be playing competitively in CSGO. Moving on to Skyrim, we had to go with the original version and not the updated version that runs on DirectX 11. However, we did see a decent frame rate at 1080p with medium settings, going between 40 and 50 frames per second on average. Dropping down to 720p medium, we saw 60 frames per second on average, which is limited by VSync. In this game, I would highly recommend dropping the resolution instead of dropping your in-game play settings, because this game is actually still quite pretty if you keep the graphics details at least at medium. Finally, we get to GTA 5. Now the HD 4870 is listed as the minimum system requirements for this game. 
However, it still can technically run it. At 1080p low settings though, we were getting on average around 20 frames per second. If you drop the resolution down to 720p, we got a better average of about 25 frames per second. Unfortunately, that's still not what I would consider playable. Now, what does this mean as far as this card holding up in 2021? Well, I think it's rather clear that it doesn't. You won't have any support for DirectX 11 or 12 games, which is the vast majority of games most people are playing today. What's worse, even with one gigabyte of VRAM, it still struggles to play most games at 1080p. 720p is the sweet spot for this video card, but keep in mind, most of these launched with 512 gigabytes of memory, 512 gigabytes of memory, 512 gigabytes of memory, let me be clear, it's 512 megabytes of memory, not gigabytes. I can only imagine what 512 gigabytes of GDDR5 looks like. And don't have the one gigabyte that we're working with here. So do I recommend this video card? I'm gonna have to give that a hard no unless you're building a retro PC that's gonna be played at a lower resolution. If you're looking for a stopgap solution till hopefully graphics card prices drop, I would definitely recommend going with the 5800 series like the 5850 or the 5870 because there you get direct X11 support and it is a much better performing graphics card. If you want to know how the HD 5870 performs, we'll post a link to a video we made about that video card. At the end of the day though, the HD 4870 is really not a card you should be considering here in 2021. As always, thanks for watching and leave a comment down below if you wanna see this HD 4870 go head to head with a GTX 260. I have one of those lying on the shelf right behind me.